Emma Raquelian, BAJ Accelerator and Orion founding partner. Suren Israelian, Law Office of Suren Israelian from New York. Welcome. Mark Chenian, Armenian Society of Fellows, Board of Directors, all the way from Los Angeles. Is he here? Mark? Oh, he's coming from there. Mark Chenian, his profession is he's actually a banker. 25 plus years executive at the bank and knows Armenia very well from top down. Thank you, Mark. Welcome. Dr. Armen Khelopian, BHJ Accelerator co founding partner and professor at AUA. D Dr. Vahant Revonzian, I'm so happy with this introduction. Director of Matena Daran, welcome. Gayane Arakelian, Director at District Foundation for Entrepreneurship and Sustainable Development, Digital Pomegranate from Gyumri. And Anthony Ungian was invited. He's a Managing Director and Senior Partner at Boston Consulting Firm from Philippines. He's actually running the big business there Unfortunately, he was called in Miami to be in a partners meeting. However, we have a message from him. Philippines is very symbolic. We actually put some time to get Philippines onto the stage or to be on this, pl on this panel because the Digital Julfa, 300-year-old Armenian merchant's powerful network was running trade from Amsterdam to Manila, Philippines. Now you know why. There was a mission there. Now we are standing up Digital Jufa Network as an evolution to global level. With diaspora, we are stronger. With innovation, we are stronger. With culture, strongest. And trade, we have to work on that as the key drivers. So I'm going to join the panel. Let's applaud the panel. I'm going, to, I'm going to start with Suren because he's kind of the initiator of this whole idea and that became planned and now it's been executed. So Suren. Uh, you have such a cute story when you and I had lunch in New York and you told me the story, how did you learn about New Julfa and how it changed your life? Uh, okay. Um, I was born and grew up here in Yerevan. Uh, I was 22 years old when I... Uh, the wind blew me to the New York, and I, uh, the rest 31 years old, I was living in New York. At no point in time I ever heard of about Julfa Armenians. Uh, and in about four years ago, I was in El Nido, Palawan Island in Southeast Asia, in a small airport, you cannot even call an airport, it's one runway with the one shack waiting for an airplane to come to pick us up. And there was a little bookshelf there. While waiting, I pulled a book on a Singapore. And I fl started flipping through the book. And on a page five on that book, there was a photograph from early 1900s, 1904 or 1905, black and white photograph of a, a, of a person, white person, look like the, from a Monopoly guy in a little uh, carriage with the person, actually a local, uh, half-naked, pulling the carriage. And behind it, there was a big, beautiful building. And on the bottom, there was an inscription that says, Raffles Hotel, built by the Sarkis brothers, Arshak, Martin, uh, Aviet, and I forgot the fourth brother's name. And I'm like, who the hell are these people? 
that built this hotel in 1887 and opened on the first day, on the birthday of the Queen, on December 1st. So it took me uh, some time to get to the uh, Manila. And when I got to the Manila, there was a, a Wi-Fi, so I could uh, research and find out uh, as to the history of those people, where they come from, who they are, and uh, find out who they are in Singapore, that they came from a Julfa network families. That then I, that I fell into a into a rabbit hole. And, and I start uh, researching one after another. As I found more, it's more there was to be found. Find out, I find out about their activities in India, in, uh, in what we call in the area now, we call Cambodia, in, in their activities in Venice, in their activities in Amsterdam, their ships that they had uh, controlled in the Mediterranean Sea, in the Indian Sea, in the Pacific Oceans, and that they, we had no country at the time, but we were flying our ships and almost had a monopoly over a significant player. Uh, and we were flying those, we, those ships were sailing under the Armenian flag. So those fi all things were very fascinating to me uh, for the one reason that I've never heard about them. And I, I consider myself an educated Armenian that no, knew about Armenian history, but I never really thought about it. To me, it was the greatest, perhaps one of the greatest achievement of the Armenian nation, perhaps second to the acceptance of the Christianity. And Avi had no idea about it. But with it comes, uh, so let me stop here, because I could talk about this forever. <laughs> now, I think after that, I understand you started to think, what can you do as an Armenian? Well, first thing, it made me proud. Uh, I was always feeling proud as an Armenian. But it made me tremendously proud to know that we as a nation contributed to the significant advancement of the human history. Because it wasn't only part of the trade. It was the part of the customs uh, the industries that were developed over 40 countries over the generations. Think about it. This wasn't a, like one group of ambitious people that came about and were able to secure that kind of a wealth and that kind of set up that kind of a network. They did this. They maintained this significant activity over generation and generation, over 100 years, over 200 years. And you cannot achieve anything like that without a vision and without a discipline and without without certain tools. So, and I thought perhaps this is where we should draw what our strengths are and from the wisdom of our ancestors of the past. Because when we look at the history, when we study the history, the most important thing we want to learn from them. We want to learn so that they, what they have done right can guide us in our pursuits of today and tomorrow. Thank you, Suren. And as of, as of that time, actually, we started so many projects together and more to come, and this is one of them. Um, let me go to Armen Khedopian. Armen, uh, it took us only two meetings, and a book we purchased about the, uh, the new Julfa, and then you came up with this name. So question one, how did you come up with digital Julfa name, because we're going to say it's trademark of yours now. And the second, how do you think, you being a scientist and data scientist and also investor, how do you think you and your type of network can help to, to recreate this digital Julfa? Thank you, Emma. And indeed, I've had actually those several hours of conversation with Suren as we learned about our history. And indeed, I similarly, like Suren, was shocked to have little knowledge of this time in our history. And as we read and we followed some of the work of Sebu Aslanyan, and it became clear that a few cliches or superficial views we have on our past, if we dug just a little bit deeper, there would be key insight. So we know that the Shah 
around 1500, brought a group of Armenians where Nakhichevan is today, to Isfahan. Okay, they're there, there's a hole in the geography now. But the timing is absolutely fascinating and involves technology. So the Armenians of Old Julfa by 1470 had already made their way to Venice. They had already begun to understand some of the sailing innovations from the Portuguese. And so we have record that the Shah, as he's warpathing north, is welcomed by the old Julfa Armenians. Now, we do not have a record of what has happened in that meeting, but you could imagine the mayor, the lead merchant, regaling the Shah about tales of Venice, the technology of the age far beyond the Persian Empire. And so after the visit, the Shah proceeds north, sieges Yerevan, marches west, and has repelled by a superior Ottoman force. Essentially on the way back, he says, the Armenians come with me. And it was because with that context, it was the Armenian awareness of technology, the Armenian awareness of ability to migrate and to interact with different cultures, and eventually the network spanned all the way from Venice, Amsterdam, Manila, even Alcapoco in the New World. And this led to a type of capability that was profound. One merchant befriended the Dalai Lama to secure the gem routes. In Spanish-controlled Philippines, the British flew the Armenian flag to land in the port. And so it became very clear from that time, from that international collaboration, the capital mobilization for trade, we are essentially doing the very same thing now, all of us. But it's not the silk trade, it's the trade, so to speak, of startups and something that can sustain our nation across country boundaries. So with that, we go from old Julfa to new Julfa to present day digital Julfa. Thank you, Armen. So digital economy, digital Julfa, now let's include history in there. We are on purpose, intentionally, holding this summit here at Madanadaran. Kind of saying, connecting that history, this power to New Julfa power, and what can we, we can do globally with so many talented, strong, accomplished, wealthy Armenians to build something that New Julfa did. So my question is to Mr. Dergevonjan now, how will you bring that history to today's world to make it more powerful? What is your opinion on that? With your permission, I will speak in Armenian, if you don't mind, if there is a I translation. I don't have that power to mind, please. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Սերելի բարեկամներ, նախ բարի գալուս տեմ բաղթում բոլորիտ, մատենադարանի այս պատերի ներքո, այս կամարների ներքո, ես չեմ խոսելու տեղեկատվական տեխնոլոգյաների մասին, բայց իրականում գիտությունը, գիտության տարբեր ճուղե Ես կարծվում շատ խորդանշական է, որ նախ ես ուզում եմ շնորավորել այս գագատաժողովի, որյոն 2022 գագատաժողովի մասնակիցներին, կազմակերպիշներին և որոր ունք ընդիրներին և մաղթել լիակատար հաջողություն ձեր բորոր աշխատանքն կարծում եմ շատ խորդանշական է նոր ջուղա անվանումը ընտրվել այս ծրագրի համար, կանի որ իսկ ապես նոր ջուղայեցիների վաճառականական ծանցը դա պարզապես առև տրով զբաղվող ինչ-որ մի ծանց չեր, ինչպես արդեն նշվե� 
Այն ժամանակ էլ էին գործում, այն ժամանակվա եղաս տեխնոլոգյաներով, որինակ որորս գիտենք ինչ բան է վարկային պատմությունը, չէ, մարդը ինչպես է, ասենք, այսօր բանկային ամբողջ համակարգը տիրապետում է � ուրեմն նամակագրության, հանձնական կապերով և դա կատարել են գրետ է կատարել ձևով, գրետ է կատարել ձևով, կանի որ կարողացել են ամստերդամից ու վենետիկից մինչև Մանիլա և շատ ավելի հերուներ տեղիկություն պոխանցել, թե որ գործ նոր ժուղայեցիները հսկայական նշանակություն են տվել կրթությանը։ Եվ կարող եմ ասել, որ հենց մենք այստեղ մաշտության մատենադայանում հրատարակել ենք մի քանի գրքեր, որոնք բոլորն էլ վերաբերում են նոր ժուղայեցիներին տարբեր երկրների չապուկշրի միավորները, տարբեր ապրանքների անվանումները, դրամական միավորները, դրանց ամինա տարբեր ներպությունները և այն լիվայն։ Ասինքը սա չտեսնված տեղի կատուններ են, հանրագիտարաններ են, որոնք ուրեմ են գաղափարների, նոր տեխնոլոգյաների, ծրագրերի պոխանակություններ, որ այն ժամանակ իրականացվում էր ամնավ արձր մակարդակով։ Ասեն, որ նոր ժուղայում վաճառականական դպրոցները բացվել են և վաճառական իրավիճակ էր սոցյալ տնտեսական և որոր առումներով, պաստորեն այս մեր ազգի ամենա առաջադեմ, ամենա պայցար, ամենա կարևոր իրագործումները հենց իրականացվել են մեր հակական գաղթոջախներում և առաջին հերտին նոր ժուղայ Այնպիսի կարևոր համայնքներ, ինչպիսիք են Հոլանդա հայ համայնքը, Հուսաստանի հայ համայնքը, Հնդկաստանի առաջին ներտին հայ համայնքը և ավելի արևելք մինչև վիլիպիններ, հիմնվել են հենց նոր ժուղայեցիների � հայ վաճառականների, հենց նոր ժուղայեցի վաճառականների կապիտալի և նրանց մշակութասիրության, նրանց ազգասիրության, նրանց ապագան տեսնելու, ապագան եսպես կանխագուշակելու այդ ունակության շնորհիվ։ Ահա ես կուզենայի, այդ ուղվածության նոր արտահայտությունը տեսնել այսօրվա թվային նոր ժուղա ծրագրում։ Եվ կարծում եմ, որ այդպես էլ կլինի շնորակալություն։ Շնորակալություն։ Thank you very much. I think the message here is that it wasn't just the trades and merchants as Suren and Armin tried to explain and Mr. Deravonjan confirmed with his deep knowledge in that history and in that part. So thank you so much for, we have three confirmations of the why Digital Julfa will make sense to do it today. Because it's about policies, about trade, about education, innovation, and plus technology and all these technologies that exist today. So we have better chance to establish this today than we add have ever had that opportunity. So with that, I'm so proud to share what Mark Chenyan is gonna tell his story because Digital Julfa is already happening. So Mark, 
question to you. With the ASOF, with the uh, this fellows organization that you establish, and you have a meeting in Lazarus Island in a couple of days. Tell us more about it. This is digital exit, digital Julfa in execution. Mark. Thank you for the question and the opportunity to talk about ASOF. But before going to ASOF, I would like to raise a question regarding the Julfa trades and so forth. It is very interesting that with all the successes that we had in those years or centuries, we actually didn't have a Rothschild. It's a question that why we did it. And I do think that that is something that we should all examine so that the second opportunity that we have now, okay, build on it and go beyond, okay, and not just the Julfa model as it is. It's just an interesting question and an intellectual one. Regarding ASOF, It was as early as 1974 where the Los Angeles community was growing from different parts of the world, but primarily from the eastern basin of the Mediterranean. People were moving over to the United States. A little bit later, the both sides started coming in. In 1978, the Barska Heights came in and so forth. So it, it's a community that suddenly explored. And by all means, it was also a community that didn't know what to do with it. At that time, <clears throat> my primarily uh, concentration was Armenian education. I believed in Armenian schools but not the Middle Eastern modern of Armenian schools, which is in Armenian they call it Askaim Barjar. That's not what I thought was needed in Los Angeles and the rest of the United States, but the concept of private schools that we have in the United States. Obviously, that thing couldn't have been achieved overnight, but it was important to move into that direction. When the waves of the 70s mid 70s, late 70s came in from the Middle East and so forth, somehow the, the community lost direction and things became too much, uh, I would call the original Beverly Hills, which is Busham. As much as I was writing white papers, <coughs> you're a voice rather than you know, a mass. And hence, at that time I also discovered the Hoover Institution up in Stanford University, which immediately I tried to get with a fellow, I was accepted. And I was attending what was happening at the Hoover and how the modus operandi, how they were doing it, the task forces, and so forth. And I really got convinced there is a missing element in Armenian reality at that time, obviously, I was talking about our part of the world in the diaspora. But after 1991, I also was thinking about our Academy of Sciences over here in a way to convert it into a think tank. Unfortunately, it was not very well accepted. But that's a side story. But all along, the thinking was that pre-1991, well thought out ideas, plans, needs, assessment, and so on, just like you do it in business, should have been done so that the limited amount of capital, the Armenian capital that was available, is efficiently put together rather than haphazardly 
somebody gives you a land, you build a building on it, and so forth, and then you find out 25 years later it was the wrong thing to do. We just don't have the United States as printing money facility and so forth. So every we have to be that. And therefore, I constantly looked at possibilities of how you create a think tank. And eventually, about a year ago, probably because of the 44 days, a group of, not sure, a group of top-notch academics, scientists, and so forth got together, all voluntarily. It was just one telephone call and everybody joined. And we created this Armenian Society of Fellows. And again, as I mentioned a minute ago about the Hoover Institution, that's the model by which we think we're going to be operating, which basically, okay, by the way, is there anybody that doesn't know what a think tank is? Okay, because think tanks are usually confused with the universities. Just for the sake of clarity, let me explain. University, universities are product-driven entities, which basically means that if you're a medical school, you produce doctors. If you're a law school, you produce lawyers. If you're an engineering school, you produce engineers. This, that's a product. A think tank is a market-driven entity. The marketplace asks you, okay, I have problems, quote unquote, and as you know, things are so complex that a single discipline doesn't answer anything. It has to be multidisciplinary. And that's exactly what the function of the think tank is. So in the diaspora, we have our own issues. Coming to Armenia, my thought was the following, that somehow during the last 30 years, okay, practically all country or national decisions and so forth, but somehow got delegated or migrated and so forth to the government. And the government was the one that was just declaring things with very, very limited private sector input. And therefore, observing that, the thought was to create a think tank. Somehow the think tank, and I know that that's true in the United States, will end up being the representative body of the private sector. And therefore, the thinking function and so forth, the analysis, is not just the domain of the government, but also it's a domain of the private sector, okay, done by the elites, qualified, multidisciplinary, and so forth, and therefore have a serious, healthy debate. What should be our policies, options, and so forth? But thought out in detail, in advance, is an important element for nations like ours, where we do not have the luxuries of printing money or numbers or concentration, and so forth. So, in a way, ASOP's primary function is to think, analyze, observe, select, and so forth, issues that should be addressed, put them into the arena, and accordingly study, and with our limited resources, end up investing or moving into directions that it makes a lot of sense. If you recall earlier this morning, I said that sometimes you really do not have good decisions. But what you do is you eliminate the least probable ones, those who have higher level but not necessarily guaranteed, you pick it up, you start moving, and in the meantime you do your course corrections and eventually end up with the right answer to whatever the problem is. I hope I was able to uh, basically give the idea. You did, Mark, and I think uh, the, the key part of this explanation is how do we build stronger private sector along with the 
stronger government. But the private sector, with the ability to solve problems that can be done only because they have the knowledge, as Mark said, and the key part of the outcome of the think tank is advocacy. Uh, they resolve some issues that we have, uh, let's say, related to specifically to us, to lands and to history, to Armenian identity. This is the group that's going to start answering those questions globally, to the government's level, to the top universities' level. Mark, you, uh, you, uh, you shared with us earlier that um, it's 156 top scientists from top universities top organizations worldwide in 30 disciplines. And they have their first official meeting in Venice. Very symbolic, exactly where the, one of the centers was for digital, or actually for New Jewel Fund, now it's digital. So we continue taking it as a center. So um, as an outcome, they will choose some items to resolve, which will bring new strength to Armenian private sector here in Armenia and some very critical global issues related to Armenian identity, history, our positioning and advocacy. So this is the group. If you know strong PhDs, uh, strong professionals, uh, the criteria Mark can provide, please approach Mark. Uh, he already has 156. Among them, Ara is your brother, Artem Paraputian. So we have two Nobel Prize winners in that group, Armenians. And I should add that my, one of my colleagues is right on my left. Yeah. Armen is one of them. Well, congratulations. You have a big mission. Uh, hopefully next time when we meet, we will see what is the outcome, exactly what problems are they going to solve. Again, private sector strength is the strength of the economy. And all of the investments, ventures, startups that we talked about, it is the combination of private sector. Now, uh, another success story. So building strong advocacy, building strong uh, network to solve the right problems for Armenian nation globally. It's not just proving to ourselves and write a book. This is real contribution to the government's level in other countries to correct things about Armenia and to correct our historic presence before and now and for the future. So it's very serious advocacy effort, which is something we all know, let's not pretend, it's one of our weaknesses. Advocacy is something we left out, but we got really strong in some other areas. Innovation is one of them, the knowledge, education, uh, more to do, but it's in a, a much better stage than advocacy. So another advocacy example, we have digital pomegranate on this panel. Why? So Guyane, as one of the executives, actually co-founder with Tat Fabaker, my very dear friend, non-Armenian, but he's doing phenomenal work for Armenia, like many other uh, here in this audience. So Guyane, tell us about how are you connecting they are definitely digital Julfa concept is right in front of you. It's happening and for multiple years. So they connected technology with history, with art. Dogane, tell us about your digital pomegranate products that you make in impact in all these public relations companies. They are an advocacy business for God's sake. And then later add please on district. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, let me give small little background on our company. So I represent District Foundation for Sustainable Development and Entrepreneurship. I also run a Digital Pomegranate, as Emma mentioned, which is a software development company. And by the way, we are the largest tech company outside of Yerevan. We are based in Gyumri, Armenia, the northern part of the country. So. Uh, and here we speak at the um, Digital Jewel Fund Network panel because we, in both of our companies, envision and understand the critical importance of founding such kind of platforms right now and here in Armenia. 
um, in both of our companies, we have only one mission on mind. We want to bring the world to Armenia and specifically to Gyumri. We see it in many different ways. We do it with bringing international customers, building worldwide businesses, educating and upgrading the local people in Gyumri, Armenia, and also building huge networks. Pomegranate uh, is building software products for such giant clients as Sony Music Publishing, Tesco, uh, governments around the world, Australian government, UK government. We build software products for international universities, including Tokai University in Japan. So this is how we take the creative mind. No? Okay. So this is how we take the creative mind, technology skills, architecture, design, and um, innovation from Gyumri to the world. So let me give you a very specific, a specific example of what we built as a digital product and how we took the uh, art and creativity from Gyumri to the world. Two years ago, with our partners from um, United Kingdom, we had a goal to create software e-commerce uh, trade platform for antique shops um, worldwide. So we said, let's focus on the first antiquity um, market in the world, which is London. So we went there, we created our product, which is called Seek Unique, and two years later, we have a dominating app in the world's first market for unique items and antiquity in London. So if you think about it, it's not only digital solution, software application, but it's creativity, it's business development, it's cross-cultural communications, it's art, it's design, it's architecture, it's everything combined. And interestingly enough, we find all of those skills in Qumri, probably a news for a lot of people. So, this is another growing product, but our portfolio is quite large. And um, should I pass to the introduction of district so that I don't, do not confuse uh, the audience with digital pomegranate and the district? So being a software development company based in um, actually one of the most challenged cities in Europe, Gyumri, I don't want to say one of the poorest, but unfortunately that's the case. And Basically, we have a mission to definitely change it. So how we do that? 10 years ago, when we were starting our company, Digital Pomegranate, we have picked this name of the Pomegranate as our brand name. Though a lot of people were like, it's too long as a company name, bad brand maybe. But still, it had a very interesting background history. So Pomegranate is a fruit full of hundreds of seeds. And if you leverage the potential of each seed, there is a huge chance every seed can become another pomegranate. And uh, probably the district idea of building a sustainable community in Gyumri was one of the most powerful seeds inside our little pomegranate. And that's how we came up with this idea. So district is um, um, ecological technology uh, smart community. It's a physical location near Gyumri, only seven minutes drive from the city center. And it's an, a mix hub of innovational business, environmental apps, resident, residential houses. It offers affordable, um, affordable housing, um, offices. Uh, it is both for tech and non-tech people. And most importantly that I want to focus on, it is um, SDG compliant, sustainable development goals by the United Nations. And we have 17 goals that we need to follow to stay fully compliant. It's no poverty, quality education, gender equality, uh, sustainable uh, living, most importantly, decent work and economic growth. So we have chosen to stand for uh, regional development in Armenia, regional economic development. To, we stand for um, technology sector decentralization because we pick to be not in the nation center, which is Yerevan, but we pick to be in Gyumri, 
which is another innovative hub for Armenians all around the world. And, also, and this is the core for the Digital Chulfa Network. And we are going to achieve all of the 16 sustainable goals with the help of international network, communications, and partnerships. Thank you very much. So this is already happening, and uh, you may actually visit their website to see what kind of art combined with old Armenian designs and how they are combining it with new products and presenting it to the world in uh, many countries, which comes with distributing Armenian culture, uh, distributing art through technology. So it's all combined. That eventually equals to advocacy. They know us. They know how to work with us. They know how to partner with us. So the partnership absolutely is the key to build wealth and advocacy. So I'm going to ask each panelist in one sentence to say two things. How to join what you are doing or what is your next step you're going to do to take this digital julfa into a project. Surin, I'll start with you. The first and foremost, I think, is the vision. If you don't have a vision, you're like a log in a, a river, it will hit on this wall, on that wall, and go on into places. Have a vision and a longer vision. Uh, so that will be to put together a vision and then execute it. Let's move on to Mark. I guess part of what I should say, what I should say, is exactly the question that I asked at the very, I mean, I suggested that how come we didn't end up having Rothschild? Regarding the diaspora, at the beginning in 1991, there was a major misconception by this country, what the diaspora was. And there, we, there were a lot of mistakes, just like the diaspora had a lot of misconceptions what Armenia was. But one of the most important things about the diaspora, and that's important for all of you to know that, especially the locals, is this that the success of the success of individuals, and we collectively have failed to transfer that individual successes into a national success, a collective success. That's a major failure. And when I said the word Rothschild, Rothschild is not just one name. It's a whole generation, a whole network. And therefore, I do think that through a lot of thinking, whatever the instrument of thinking you would like to use, as we do things, we should also analyze to death to find out how we can make a difference and become relevant for the rest of the world. Our recent history and actually you can go all the way centuries. One of the big problems that we have had, and therefore always being a small nation, conquered, occupied, and so forth, is simply because we were not being able, okay, brilliances, okay, to network them together, and most important of all, be relevant for the rest of the world. And when you're relevant for the rest of the world, when you have problems, people do lift fingers. Thank you very much. Let's move on. Armen. My pleasure. In terms of this question on how to engage, you know, to draw analogy from the old Julfa network, there was something known as the Commenda contract. The merchants out at sea in far-flung cities had backers. 
And so what we have currently is something analogous, not called a commenda contract, but a safe agreement, simple agreement for future equity that's penned between angels and startup founders. So if you are a new angel, if you are an existing angel looking to get stronger, by all means find me, find Emma, find Artur, find Samson. We welcome your engagement. Thank you, Armen. That was very precise. Well done. Next, uh, Mr. Terrevondian. Yes, I'm a package. I'm going to go to Եվ ունեցած է մտավոր նյութական կարողությունները ծառայեցնել կրթության ու մշակույթի զարգացման ապագայի հիմքերը ստեղծել։ Սա է գլխավոր դաս շնորհակալություն։ Շնորհակալություն, Գայնե։ So I think we can um, happily announce that we have a district as a physical stop for the digital Julfa network. Uh, digital and um, everything online is wonderful and being connected, even if not physically together, is wonderful. But still we believe that the network will eventually need some kind of physical stops and physical locations, hubs to host all of these people and all of these minds together. So we are happy to say that district would be great stop for the digital Julfa network whenever it wants some kind of physical meetings and physical uh, gatherings. Um, I also want to mention something about what we do uh, in Gyumri in terms of providing platforms to communicate with different countries and cultures. Interestingly enough, we had a very similar idea with uh, building a digital Silk, Silk Road platform. Um, Gyumri is a sister city with Xi'an in China, and we have opened this platform for the two cities to communicate more effectively, to build bridges and to do business together and trade together. So I think we already have some good practical experience and examples, and we will be happy to host everyone interested in the district. Come visit us. We are in Gyumri, and you can also visit the website district.am with K. Um, so we have three options with partnering with us, investing with us, and also hiring us as a technology team. Um, I think that that's, that that's the overall goal of the Digital Chulfa Network. Thank you so Thank much. You. So more options, opportunities for partnership and a global partnership. I think the fascinating part is everybody sitting here has, is bringing the global perspective, global relationships and partnerships. So Armenia, let's partner, let's create wealth and advocacy. With that, thank you so much, panel. You've been amazing. Thank you.